<laughs> Potter's Journal summer is going into fall now as I build for a big show. Uh, some of the work I started in early and thought ahead to stockpile mugs. Um, this was a his and hers barrel mug. Um, so you can tell at the breakfast table who's is who's with the Pittsburgh on it. The um, penis on the top, the medium pork on the bottom. They were such a success. But another firing. Oh no, what went wrong? Um, and then trying it with the medium cork over the um, pale seaweed or molten green transparent, thinking it worked out good on jugs. Well, on the inside, it completely crawled and separated, so they just look like dirty mugs. Um, with my Celadon, nice combination, but this actually was a big selling success through the summer. Um, got it pretty close, and when I decided I needed more of these because I'd sold them through the summer, uh, such a success that, okay, what kind of bird is that? Is that my hawk? Maybe. Um, okay, um, turned out a little bit different, but not quite as nice. So I sometimes put away a prototype. Um, I still need to make more mugs for this show because I know these are success. I'll show you how this project got started and works through this year. I'm not a full-time potter. I just have the winter months to do this. I'm going to be doing five different styles of mugs. I'm roughly about 25 of each. So if I just did mug videos, yeah, that would be five mug videos. So we'll try to get them all in one video clip here. Okay, we'll compact the bottom. Once I get uh, yeah past the first view, I've got a pretty good idea of how what the thickness is down there. Okay, and this is the one with the flared out top. I'm actually going to do three styles of it: one with slip, one with just some lines carved into it. Um, it's kind of a glaze test thing to see what the some new glazes and some old ones do. And one mug that will be flared out or barreled. And one special shape for some face mugs. So basic cylinder. I don't want to trim these, so we will give that an undercut. Round off the corner. different glazes will do with lines carved in we will and just a basic decoration that's been done time and time again by so many potters Okay, get the excess water off the bottom, a little final shape, and, okay, style number one. how the glazes catch in there. Um. 
Okay, and this is with the wavy pattern worked through it, uh, just a single glaze. Uh, something made quick and easily so that, um, you know, I can have something that sells a little bit less, not being um, I'm a world famous, just an average good potter, I hope. Okay, the first batch of 20 mugs trying to get well over 100 made to last me through the selling season. These were the stamped Pittsburgh, and here's my favorite of the group. Okay, we got the stamp upside down. Now, on to the second group with the wavy lines in there, and probably do just a single glaze to see what it does with that. Put it thin enough so that it breaks. And setting up to work here, one thing you do want to make sure you do is turn off the wheel because I stepped on it and that just isn't a good thing to do. I'm going to get the bottom smoothed out. These were cut right off the wheel. I don't want to trim anything. Um, at this point, if there's anything rough on the side, it will just, um, it's too wet and it'll just smush in there. So what I'll do is let this dry out a bit and then it'll either just rub off or I can take a scrub and scrub uh, to it. Another 20 mugs. Um, this Again with the trumpeted tops. This time we'll change the design of the pattern and the decoration on the side a little bit. I've been wanting to do but avoiding doing the squiggle thinking it may be too common or even too amateury, but was just admiring some Clive Bowen pieces and his seem to have so much life in them even to sing so if I don't try okay and because these have the slip on them I have to do the slide off method to get them off the wheel with the pulling the water under. Okay, and the wavy pattern with the celadon, this is a combination that I really like. Um, it also works with the um, medium cork and the sea mist um, on this bottle. But okay, this was that one firing where the glazes came out a little bit different, so um, yeah. I had success early on and a few changes later. Okay, the mug project is moving along. I am ready to start glazing now. Let's see, we've got two, four, six. I've still got um, a couple more batches to go, but um, we'll get some glazed and uh, test out some new glazes while we're at it. We will put these on the banding wheel real fast. I'm going to wax the bottoms. I don't know. Sometimes I dip them. Sometimes I leave the finger marks. Um, today, we'll put the water base wax resist on the bottom. to the third style of mug using a specked clay and a white slip. I'll use a single translucent glaze over it and then maybe another combination with one on the inside, one on the outside. And this is the combination pattern I really like. We've got the, you know, natural tones and the sea mist that gives people some color. Um, I tried it with um, a number of clay bodies, so the same glaze coming out very differently on a number of clay bodies. It's actually a earthenware that I either took up a little higher than it's supposed to or just barely made it to cone six.
Okay, handles. I will try to make this e look easy. Break off a piece of clay. Roll it into a carrot. Okay, flatten it. Give it a turn. Flatten it and another turn. Okay, and I'm putting a groove down there. I'm cutting it the length of the needle minus the needle. And okay, then getting the mug. Deciding if there's a front or a back. Um, I'm putting it in the inner curve of the mug where the um, it starts to flare out at the top. And a bit of slip. I'm doing these because I'm doing roughly 120 mugs. I'm doing these in small batches at a time because um, this is not necessarily difficult but time consuming and a tedious part and these are um, I cut that with a V cut um, so it fits right onto the side of the pot and it's wider on one end so you can both push in on the handle and then into the side of the pot okay line it up with the slip and in on the handle and into the side of the mug a couple of times till it's on there good Okay, and then round off both sides. Okay, forcing them, uh, arching and forcing pressure into the side of the mug. Okay, and then clean sweep underneath. Um, the top is not a clean sweep because it's three different points. So make sure there are no thumb marks. I made these a little bit too thick. So um, I'm dunking them in water and then pulling them um, thinner. Um, usually I um, coil them so that they fit right on without doing this. Um, so an added step in the process today, giving that a nice rounded curve pushing it onto the side of the mug just above the bottom uh, angle that um, goes to the base and uh, yeah pressing in in the center and then rounding off the sides okay and I'm uh, making sure everything's clean and giving it a shape and yeah doing small batches of 20 at a time because um, if you do too many and you don't get to them, they may dry out. Okay, and that is it. It's also a third clay body I'm using, so I feel like I am really getting to know a form and a decorating method and learning it through two, three now, different clay bodies all reacting very, very different. And my favorite ones, they've evolved. The uh, favorite ones are the last two. I do like this decoration method with the celadon, but um, it especially works good with, uh, you know, the the, the uh, medium cork um, over the slip and the um, sea mist. Um, and also, some of these, as the form evolved, got narrower, really feels good in the hand. And um, the kind of thing that's okay would make a good cling of the glass um, tumbler. I'm glad I built up some inventory on mugs ahead of time. I've got to get this um, booth refurbished. It's coming up fast. Let's see what else has been going on in the studio. Um, just so I don't get bored, I was inspired by this Nancy Schmelzer piece and the uh, Picasso-inspired pieces I did. Um, I stockpiled some of the best of the mugs. So we'll see how they do at this show. 
and um, something new, something I just did at the last moment here.